Hello! That's right, and welcome to Sports by Compion. NFL preseason edition. I do this thing with my hand every time when we're starting the episode so people know it's serious stuff. Hi, your host, Stephen Compion. I'm here on Sports by Compion to talk to you about stuff that's good about sports. And I'm also joined by my powerful co-host, the man with the looks, the man with the biceps, Corey Compion here in the league. My apartment slightly slides that way. Also a part of it. We're here. We're doing it. What up, Corey? How you doing? Fantastic. I'm in my brand spanking new apartment. You want to see something cool? If I do a yeah. bunch of motion, I'm going to slide this way because my apartment's Whoa. on an incline. Oh, sick, dude. You're in the new apartment? I sure am. Nice. Been here bro. for like uh, like two weeks now. Fucking setting shit up, building furniture and such. Wow. Exciting times. So cool. Exciting times in the world, Steven. That's right. That's right. Corey is settled into his new apartment, and I support my confidence fans. We're the first ones to come here into his, his uh, apartment for this show. So really honored, Corey. Thank you for having us. Anyway, we're here to talk about some Buccaneers football, guys. That's right. This is kind of a Buccaneers channel. We talk a shitload of rugby on here, and we get into football of all kinds. But really, we're a Buccaneers channel, right, Corey? Buccaneers That's right. Stuff? Buccaneers, man. We know yeah. who they are. They're out here fucking plundering. Getting after the booty. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we drafted some guys, Corey, during the spring. You know, we uh, we drafted some dudes, some guys, and we we're like, here, play for our team. And they're like, we're giving millions of dollars, and I'll do it. And they, and then we did, and now they're playing for us. And then, um, then Corey, you're not gonna believe this. And the whole time that we were just like talking about rugby and like. You know, interviewing Ravens and like, hey, what are you up to? And they're like, oh, I'm a Raven. They're like, wow, really? So you play rugby? And like that kind of thing happening? The NFL is just doing their preseason apparently. Like that's already oh, over. Dude. I've been aware. I've been go- I've been forcing random people that know absolutely nothing about football to go watch fucking third and fourth stringers watch football with me, and it's been great. Wow, wow, that's a real commitment. I yep. love that. So you've been researching all this for Sports by Compton, right? So we can continue to give them vague details. I've I've seen the third and the fourth half of the last two games of the Cowboys. Hey, so you've seen Trey Lance do absolutely nothing. I saw Trey Lance throw three interceptions on three drives. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of <laughs> like that. So me and Chris, both very not sober in a random bar as I'm trying to explain to him about the, the history of Trey Lance and about how he's really just kind of rolling the dice. Maybe he's going to be a guy. And then I saw he's him just not, guy. not not clutch it. And I was like, I don't I don't know my guy. I don't know if he's the guy. Like, to be fair, he's had very little football in his life. Like, he hasn't had, like, you know, meaningful. Oh yeah, reps. he only had like one season with his like college. I think like he even played like a handful of games in that. Season. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then, then he got like, hurt right the away. Round quick. And then he got hurt right away. Like he's had so little. He's been hurt like multiple times. So, and also he had flashes of greatness. He apparently had the most rushing yards and passing yards of any quarterback in you know during the preseason. I think that's probably because he just played the most. He was playing so much, wasn't he? He he ran in a touchdown. Like he did some good shit. He still got like sixty percent completions. But you threw three intercept he threw five interceptions overall in the game and three in the final three drives where we needed Jesus. like I think like a point to win or a touchdown to win. I don't know. It was very close. All we needed was to score the one time. And he was like, I I don't wanna <laughs> I want I want them to score instead. Ouch, ouch. Tough day for the boy. Uh, Cooper Rush time. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, Corey, this is a Bucks show, okay? We're here to talk about the Buccaneers, okay? Uh, but yeah, preseason's right. been happening, dude. It's the thing. Uh, the Bucks, I haven't paid made much attention to it. But I do know that we probably pretty much went two and one. And then I did some Scrabble research today to get the sports like copy fans lots of vague information. Plus, I just know about the Buccaneers, okay? Just know about these just guys. Just know shit, man. I just know shit. In the atmosphere, your brain just goes... I'm in it. I'm a part of it, dude. Like, I know... It up information. Yeah, yeah. Plus, shout out Peter Report. They really do know so much over there. Anyway, hopping into the final 53-man roster, Corey. It has been decided. This is it. This is the guys who are going to go win the Super Bowl for us. Done deal. Here's the here's the boys. It's Mike Evans. Are you surprised that he made the 53-man roster, Corey? Not really. I'm glad he's back. Will he get another thousand years? My or another thousand yards? He's got to do it. Yes. Oh, 100%. I, honestly, I think it's like it's like starting to become like a, a mission 
of like the whole Buccaneers offense. So like, yeah, yeah. Whatever was winning. Also, like, where's Mike? Does he where's have Mike? a thousand we yards yet? Yards. What's going on? We gotta get him a thousand yards. <laughs> Maybe we just maybe that's the bet for the year. Frankie's talking about running back the bet yet again. Maybe five thousand just... on Mike Evans to hit a uh, thousand yards for the eleventh time in NFL history and starts. Uh, not five thousand. I'm talking like uh, like fifty. Yeah, I'm that like could 50. be worth it. I might put a hundred on that because that's a that's a big one. We should look into the odds. A lot of so question marks. Who's so your backup? Well, I guess we're about to find out. Anyway, well, Chris Godwin's going to be um, – I think they might slide him into the slot because rookie Jalen McMillan has looked so great. So this guy, we drafted him third round, absolute steal for us because he was injured a lot on that really good Washington team. But before he got injured, he was kind of like the guy. He was like the dude, Corey. They'd like throw him the ball on short passes. He's like making it to a long pass. Really shifty little little dude and just goes around and does really cool stuff, but apparently it's fast as hell. So he um, he has kind of beat out Trey Palmer. I know they have Trey Palmer in front of him here. But from my understanding from Peter Report, he has kind of beat out Trey Palmer for that third spot. So maybe Palmer will start there, and maybe they'll be alternating. But either way, um, we're going to see a heavy rotation of those two, uh, you know, at that, at that third receiver spot court behind Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. By the way, Godwin, he's in a contract year. You know what that means gonna play like he wants to make generational wealth like he wants to make yet more generational wealth he's already made generational wealth he wants to just double down on that your old third contract will be really nice for him anyway tristan worth out there being one of the best tackles in all of football i uh, think he already got paid or if not we're gonna pay him either way my man's just absolutely killing it um really happy he made the transition from right tackle to left tackle last year so this will be his second year now here at left tackle. I think he's just going to absolutely dominate and be um, the total so, Corey. That's what I recommend. It's going to happen, don't you think? I'm here for it. Anyway. Why um you have but, only one left guard and no backup left guard? Because we don't need to. Ben Brunson, dude, this guy, you know, he's just going to fucking dominate. And he's going to be awesome. He's never going to get injured. I so it was a big old battle between him. If he has to. It was a big old battle between this guy, Ben, I think Robert Hainsey was in the mix, and, like, some other dudes who got injured. Um, anyway, Ben ends up winning that, you know, just who knows why, but he's in there, which I'm kind of happy with, dude. Robert Haynes was freaking struggling last year, so good to see someone kind of beat him out. Um, you know, maybe Hainsey will learn from this and become better in his third year now. Who knows? But more importantly, our first-round draft pick, Graham Barton. He looks pretty good so far in uh, preseason games, from my understanding, running people over, pancaking them, doing all those things you want your center offensive linemen to do, Corey, bully the defense, make them feel bad about themselves, you know? I'm, I'm here for it. But, so we have no backup for your left guard. We only have mm. one backup quarterback, so no yeah. third stringer. And we have four tight ends? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is just what they decided to go for. But you're you're jumping ahead of the gun, Corey. We are going through the starters. I'm looking at problems, Steven. I see a Corey, problem. Identify the problem. Not, it's not a problem. Okay. Offensive I'm worried about it. Also, dude, Robert Hainsey can play guard. So Robert Hainsey can play guard or center. So think of him like a dual backup over here. All right. All right. Fair enough. Does that make you feel better? That does make me feel better. I feel more <laughs> yeah. fuzzy now. Let's yeah, go. Robert Hainsey can play both. Um. Anyway, Cody Malk. Robert Hainsey was a starter last year. That's what I was just saying. That uh, he kind of lost his spot here to Ben now. So you got options. But, but he kind of sucked, so I'm okay with it, Corey. <laughs> anyway, love you, Robert. Hope you have a better year. Um, Cody Malik, fucking, this dude has just absolutely sick hair. He's an angry red ginger. Uh, we drafted him from a small school, as we love to do, and have developed him into a pretty good offensive lineman. It's just how the Buccaneers roll. We like to go for really small school guys, just like who bullies in like Division Two or Division Three, and no one's ever heard of them. And we come in, and we're like, dude, just like hang out in our weight room to forever, and then you're never gonna leave here. This is your new home now. And we give them a little cot in the, you know, the end of the way with the squat rack, and that's just where they live until they become a good office. So like you live in Tampa, dude. There's just gonna be tons of girls coming through constantly. Where the fuck do you want to be, bro? Hang out. Yeah, come on, come on, hang out here, dude. So yeah, he had a couple t uh, rough years. Uh, like his rookie year was kind of tough, but much better last year, and I'm expecting a lot. From in his third year. And then Corey Luke Gedeke, um, he came into us as a rookie, stuck the guard. We kind of swung, swung him out to tackle last year, and he has taken really well to it. He's had a fantastic year. 
Uh, once again, expecting a big year out of him as well for that third for coming in here at tackle. And then, yeah, Brandon Walton will be a nice little backup uh, along with Justin at the two tackle spots. And as we kind of already talked about the wide receiver spot for that third thing, Trey Palmer and, and McMillan. Cameron Johnson apparently came in as uh, sort of like an undraft uh, from this tiny little school. Where the hell come up with this? I just heard it. Fuck. We'll say it on his name. Cameron, where? what school did you go to, Cameron? Cameron. Tell us hey, Cameron. Difference. Barton Cameron. College. So, like, my boy, so our first round draft pick, Corey, is called Graham Barton. And then we, you know, got this kid from Barton College. We're just Bartoned up, okay? That's just how we roll. Don't don't think it's weird because it's really actually normal and really cool. Anyway, so, yeah, this guy apparently was a total stud in, in um, camp. Actually, he was better than Trey Palmer, but Trey Palmer is a third round pick from last year. So, we're like, hey, we ain't going to cut him, you know? So, yeah, we, end, we ended up hanging on to him. Um, apparently, a lot of good receivers for, for Team Jarrett. Was good. Uh, Sterling Shepard, veteran from the Giants, ended up cutting him because uh, we just didn't have room. So, as of right now, the the school year is still going, right, for colleges? What? Like so, so like right now, during during this preseason camp, the uh, school is still happening at these universities. These dudes are not going to college right now, Corey. But if he's 22, <laughs> like, dude, as soon as they as soon as they get the call to the NFL, they they figure out their degrees later. Well, he was on, undrafted, but... so he's undrafted. Did he like go back for his senior year, or is it like once he was declared for the draft, he can't play in college anymore? Because it seems like he definitely rolled the dice hard by like bailing on his scholarship to go to a training camp and just hope for the best. He's 22. Dude, that means he graduated. Oh. I don't yeah, they go into college at 18. Or, or, and also, you're really off on this one, Cor. <laughs> this one, you're you're really off on. So, so he was a kids, senior. Most of these kids are going to college. I mean, to play college football because they want to go to the NFL. You know, right, I get that. But like, they're taking their shot, dude. Like, if you don't get drafted, that. you go back for your senior year and hope that you look better. I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know. Maybe, but I think it might be a but thing. But a lot a of guys, senior. you're probably right. A lot of guys, probably a senior. Anyway, yeah, we, just come, we got over. completely off topic here, but yeah, dude, dudes are dudes are absolutely going to take, take a shot at the NFL as opposed to finishing their degree in some who knows where college. It's worth it's worth the risk. You do it. <laughs> Life is a risk. Plus, if you get in there early enough, like guys leaving their junior year, sophomore year, very common. Um. Anyway, uh, the tight end situation, Corey, is really good. We have four tight ends here. You know, it's kind of crazy, but we 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 love our tight ends over there. And even though. Um, what the fuck is uh, Cohen doesn't usually use a lot of tight end sets. Apparently, he might be changing it up because I mean, he took four. So, Kate Otten going into his third year has looked much better. Uh, towards the end of his second year, hoping for a lot from him from this year. Payne Durham was a fifth round pick from last year, had phenomenal play when he was out there, some really nice catches. So, he's going into his second now. Coquefe, I believe, is in his third now, more of a Special teams player, sick hair on him as well. Um, really cool guy. I like him a lot. I love his draft video. I've mentioned it on this podcast before. And then Devin Cup is our seventh round pick. So apparently they see a lot of potential in him. He, um, he's fast, big playmaker potentially. So they're going to work on him. That's why they kind of kept uh, four tight ends, which isn't totally common, of course. So that's I mean, why. If you're course. running two tight ends, then you know you, you want to have options. We can. I think they'll they'll start doing that now. So it is um normally this offensive coordinator doesn't do that, but who knows? I guess he will now. And then Kyle Trask in his third year has looked really good. Um, had a decent little preseason. I think he was three touchdowns, one interception, one rushing touchdown, something like that. So modest numbers, but I mean honestly, I'll take that over like what eight interceptions or something by Trey Lance. Like sounds crazy over there. Anyway, <laughs> put it out there. Where wants it? They feel strong. They feel good with him. They'll probably bring John Wolford back um, to as uh, a training camp third third uh, quarterback. If we do need him, we'll bring him in. But we're running with the Baker himself. To let him bake himself, Mayfield is gonna take the field for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Looks absolutely awesome as usual. And I think he's just gonna kick ass and take names this year, Corey. That's what I think. A lot of haters out there, Cedric, who uh, say he's gonna have a bad year, but you know that's just uh, what haters do. They hate. They hate on champions. Anyway, running back room is really exciting this year, Corey. And Rashad White, coming off a massive year last year, uh, was snubbed, I believe, a top 100 player spot. Like, 
I mean, what else does he have to do? He had a thousand yards rushing and not to mention all his receiving yards, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, Rashad White will have another great year, I suspect. And then we drafted Bucky Irving in the fourth round, running back out of Oregon, very shifty, very fast. It looks awesome all training camp, preseason. So they're very excited to see what he can do as a, in that running back two spot. Sean Tucker, um, a fan favorite from last year, didn't quite make the team, but we brought him back this year and he um, he's an explosive dude, very fast, did some, had some massive plays during the preseason, a lot of uh, big gangs. So yeah, I think they're excited to see what he can do as well since he figured out how to block a little bit more. So now he'll uh, be able to be a part of the offense core. Why was he a fan favorite? Because we just latch on to the Buccaneers fan base is a lot like me. We just latch on to like guys. We're like, this guy, he's super cool. He's a cool star. Yeah, yeah. Well, he can make it. <laughs> anyway, uh, defense. One is with that dude from the Bills that doesn't wear shoes and is just like. Oh yeah, now everyone loves that hands. guy now for sure. Which everyone's the best. Did he make the bat roster? I wonder. I don't, I don't know, know what his name is, or we can look it up. I think he was out there making plays happen. So I think he's. I think he's in there. He's like a third round pick, I think. So he's probably definitely making it. Yeah. I forget what it was. His pick was. Anyway, on to the defense core. The important thing. The thing that is going to be the strength of the Buccaneers this year. Because we got a lot of returning guys. Which, by the way, some quick stat for you people out there. Which I entirely stole from um, the Buccaneers' websites themselves. Or their main report people. 44 of these 53 man, uh, people on this roster, Corey, are all homegrown. Jason Light either drafted them himself or brought them in as undrafted free agents. So how about that for you? And 20 Sounds... of the 22 starters are all, once again, drafted by Jason Light or brought in. So the, the man knows how to draft, and he knows how to believe in his guys. So they're good enough to start, apparently. Pretty cool. Do love my man, Jason Light. Anyway, first round pick from last year. Sounds like Kansas he also had... doesn't play the game very much. What do you mean? Like he's not out there trading and like, you know, wheeling. Oh, yeah. Game. No, we don't We don't usually fuck around with too many free agents. I mean, he signs free agents every once in a while. Sometimes they work out. A lot of times they don't. He's not the best free agent. In Except for this one free agent he found, Tom Brady. But besides that guy, like it hasn't been super awesome. <laughs> just the one time. Just the one time he really hit a home run and everyone kind of just lets him pass on the rest of it. No, he's actually brought in a couple of good um, uh, free agents over the years. JPP, you could go as far back as Robert something or another, came from the Giants. Had a, he was a stud for us for a while. Um, who was another one? Obviously, Antonio Brown, before he had completely went insane on us. He was he was a nice little addition there. I'm Robert, sure, I'm sure there have been. I'm just saying, like, yeah, all of those numbers, it seems yeah, like yeah. he just is like, well, I don't want to. These are all my things. You can't have any of my things. I don't want any of your things either. <laughs> he's building a super young team, and he's starting his own guys. Like, the amount of starters that are in their second or third year, you know, I'm trying to wonder if this is a Madden franchise. Really, really well done. Anyway, uh, Kalaji Kanti. Uh, with our number one draft pick last year, absolute stud. Can't wait to see what he's going to do for us this year. Um, and he's starting along Vita Bea. Just, you know, what, what's there to say about Vita Bea? The man was just like just running people over in the training camp. He's so big. He's so strong. Dude, I saw him in a preseason game just like mugging someone. <laughs> it was like, hey, why are you playing preseason, sir? You leave that rookie alone. <laughs> yeah, they apparently like only played like one series against the Dolphins, gave him a quick three and out, and wandered off to their night. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was rough. <laughs> like, I see Vita Bea just, like, pick this guy up and just march for it. It's like, hey, no, that's a human. Dude, Put him down. That, that's, that's a full-grown man who probably weighs, like, 300-something pounds. It's like, dude, you can't and, just and do that to him. To it's not like He's, he wandered in he on the street. He has a family. <laughs> and then uh, Logan Hall, um, our second-round pick, but technically our first-round pick from a couple years ago. Need this kid to do something this year, Corey. This is kind of a... You know, he needs to figure it the fuck out this year. Uh, going into his third year now, I believe. So, yeah, it'd be really cool if Logan Hall could just do some cool stuff that we drafted him really high to do, you know? Mm-hmm. Greg Gaines is a is a free agent. I think he came over from the Saints, from the Rams. Good plug player for us. Really good against the run. Ah, William Golston. What do you say about this guy, dude? 12th season with, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is one of the only three OGs on the whole team, Corey. One of the only three players over 30 years old has just found a way to stay on the team year after year. Good uh, run blocker. Gets out. He's more of a rotational player at this point, but he's a good mentor to all the guys, a real glue Wait. locker room type dude. So him and three and two other guys are over 30. Can I try to guess who they are? 
Yeah, go ahead. Him, Mike Evans, Vita Vea. Nope. Lamonte David. But you were right on the other two. Wait. Lamonte, Lamonte David is the only other old ass. Vita Vea old, old is under 30? Dude, we drafted Vita Vea first round in 2018. Holy shit! I, he yeah, just, he's still, he, I've he's been still hearing about him for so long. I just assumed that he was like <laughs> he's been he's been very good since like his second year. So and he uh, we paid him recently. So he's been in the league for a while now. Just absolutely dominating people. It's pretty cool. That's good shit. It's a young team. Yeah, man. Like like I said, Jason Lyons knows how to draft him. Anyway, uh, so yeah, William Goldson, absolute glue player. Um, love to see him back with the team. This is awesome. Ernest Brown um, apparently showed out during. Camp. He came over from the from the Rams. Decided to see what he could do. A big old boy in there. Yeah, yeah. Diaby is back for another season. Corey, second year uh, was really the hope of our pass rush last year. Hope to see him, you know, get back into that again this year and continue to be an uh, absolute nuisance. That'd be great. Anthony Nelson drafted him in the fourth round forever ago, and he just has been a steady player for us. You know, a six to eight sack guy every year. Um, I suspect the same out of him again this year. And Marquise Watts is going to be cool, too. Uh, this is a younger guy. We're giving him a shot now. He has a sack to his name already. We'll see what else he can do this year. Obviously, he'll be in their own rotation. There's a couple other outside linebackers that aren't listed here that are also taken. Um, which are they? There they are. They're over here. So Joe Charn, Sharenka. Dude, this guy also really needs to figure it out. So I think we drafted him before Logan Hall in 2020. Really, really needs to get his life together, Corey. He needs to start being the finisher because he gets back there a lot, but he just doesn't sack the quarterback. He, like, runs by them, does all the weird stuff. Instead of just, you know, tackling the guy, it'd be great. So we need more consistency out of him. It'd be sweet to see him coming to his own because if not, second round pick, Chris Boswell is hot out of his tail. Absolute stud out of um, Alabama. Already was looking really, really good during the preseason. I'm excited to see uh, what he brings to this pass rush. And then Jose Ramos. And this is a black man named Jose Ramos, and he uh, apparently is a really good pass rusher. Should be good times. Hopping over to the, the black um, gentleman next... who likes the darkness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, hopping over to the secondary. We got a whole bunch of DBs. This was the battle for all these guys to get on there. Jamel Dean holds it down um, as the number one corner for us, uh, with Diane McCollum playing number two. Bryce Hall and Josh Hayes are both going to be the backups as well as um, Taiki Thunderbird. I heard this dude had a really awesome preseason. He's an undrafted free agent. So it's always cool to hear about those stories. Josh Hayes apparently murders people on special teams. So that's cool. And then Anton Winfield and Jordan Whitehead will be the safety score. Anton Winfield, as you well know, I think is one of the best safety in the league. Should um, get a lot more recognition than he does. He got a pretty decent spot on the top 140 something. I think he should have been higher. But either way, um, he's an absolute baller. Probably the best player on this defense. Really excited to see what he's going to get after. I can't believe I missed Lamonta David. Love to see Lamonta David back. This was another huge sign. Another Bucks fan favorite. He's just, he's just been around forever. He's an old OG. Uh, but KJ Britt will be starting opposite him. A fourth round pick from a couple of years ago that people really didn't think was going to pan out to much other than like a special teams guy. And now he's stepping in as a starter for us. He looked good last year. I have full, uh, full belief in him. If not, Sebastian Davis and uh, Dennis, I'm sorry, and JJ Russell, also our own draft picks, will we'll, we'll, um, we'll fill in nicely. Both those guys got time last year, and I think, uh, I think they're going to all do really well. I'm excited about it. So, yeah, so that's pretty much uh, the gig. Oh, yeah, Christian Izian will be backing up. Um, both the corners, and I think Ty Tyke Smith, our third round pick, or yeah, third round pick out of, out of Georgia, is going to be our nickel corner. It's a nasty, nasty defense, Corey. You're not going to want to like really try to score on them in general. You should probably just not. Just don't. You know, just give just up. Don't. Just, just don't home, even try, dude. You're drunk. What are you even fucking doing here? Don't, don't do it, dude. And then yeah, Jake Kamara just going to be punting the fuck out of the ball again this year. It'll be sweet. Like a third round, fourth round pick from a couple years ago. I was like, oh, God, here we go again, drafting an early puncher. But now this kick to fucking kick it. So it's going to be dope. Uh, we'll see what he can do. Chase McLaughlin, we brought in, had a nice year for us last year. And I think he's going to go ahead and do the same thing. Anyway, let's have a look at the schedule. Are you ready for this? Serious stuff. We're going to make predictions here. We're going to be really serious. All right, hold up. Let me get let me get a notepad up. We're yeah, get your, keep get your serious face Wins and losses here. It's going to be great, dude. Yeah. Damn. Fucking locked and loaded. Let's go. All right, ready for week one? Sure am. 
All right, we're hosting the um, the Commanders, which is definitely a win for us. We're going to smoke JT. Strong out JT, the gate. Daniels, he's out of here. And then we got to go to Ford Field to play the Detroit Lions. As much as I'd love to say we'd win this game, I think that's going to be a really tough one. I'll give us our first loss there. Okay. Then we're hosting the Broncos. We got the silly Broncos. We'll be fine. So that's two and one. I think we could pull off a win against the Eagles again because they're another mess. And you should, you know, I just don't have much belief in them. They suck. We'll be that's three and one. That's a crazy scary that. roster, though, dude. People are saying it's like the best roster in the league. They've been well, like then, then behind the 49ers. We'll see if they can tackle this year. Anyway, the Atlanta Falcons, really tough game. We're probably going to end up splitting against the Falcons. Um, and it is a Mercedes Benz Stadium. I'll say they take this one. So at least this will, what, 3 2? 3 2. And then we got the Saints, once again on the road. I'm going to say we take this one because we don't like to lose two games in a row. Uh, then we're hosting the Ravens. This might be our first loss at home. So four and three. And then we got the Falcons, which I said we were going to split them, so we're going to win that one. Then we go to the Chiefs in Arrowhead. Oof, I'd love to say we win that, but we're probably going to lose in November. The Chiefs are real serious in November. <laughs> Five and four. We're going to beat the Chiefs, and we're going to lose to the 49ers. That's how it's going to go down. Six and four. Six and four. Six and, and four going the- into the bye week. Nice oh, we'll beat the Giants. Right the you know what, dude? No, nah, no, we'll beat them. Fuck it. Nah. You know, we're going to split one of these two. I really believe that. And then um, all three of these guys we're going to beat. I can see us maybe drop it to the, to the Spike up Raiders. after the bye week to nine and four. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Then we'll lose to the Giants because, um, I mean, to the Chargers because, you know, we too, need too many ones down. in a row doesn't make sense. Yeah, Someone will figure you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Cowboys will probably also beat us because yeah, we gotta get we'll we'll, we'll be struggling a little bit. <clears throat> then I think we finish strong. We beat the Panthers and the and the Saints in that the year. What that put us at? That is uh, eleven and six. I can see that. I can absolutely see that. We were nine and eight last year with a significantly worse team than we're coming into this year with. I get everybody got better or whatever. I think we're gonna be. I think we're gonna have a really good year. So I can see us winning two more games than last year. Totally reasonable. I feel like last year there was a couple teams that were like, "Oh, those guys are a fucking hot mess. They're gonna be an easy win as soon as you yeah. put them." There's not really anyone like that this year. I mean, I guess the, the Panthers, Panthers. kind of still suck. Yeah, um, the Panthers still suck. I'm not too worried about the Broncos. They got the like Raiders don't seem overly scary. The, exactly, Gardner Minshew. Like yeah, I'm the not, Broncos, not sure it really that. depends if that rookie. The Commanders could be good eventually, what, as as um you know that rookie gets more comfortable. But right now they don't make too scary. So no, I don't. Other than that, it is pretty scary here. The Giants, we should be able this to be the Giants. This too. is a tough. Oh, I mean the Giants. I mean, did you see Daniel Jones during the preseason? Like they're not too scary. They should be okay. No, I think we'll be okay. But yeah, it is funny that we get both the people in the Super Bowl plus the Ravens. And the Eagles, great. And and the Lions, whole bunch of playoff teams from last year here for it. Yeah, Bengals. Bengals were in the playoffs, weren't they? No, they weren't. No, they weren't not that, that was the pre, that was the preseason. We played them anyway. Oh, and the Cowboys, also a playoff team. And, and I think the Chargers are gonna be really good this year. Not to mention the fucking Saints and the Falcons, which are always a pain in the ass. Panthers too. You know, you never know what the Panthers. It's been a rough job a while for them, but they gotta get their shit together at some point. Where is the uh, the Cowboys game? Cowboys game is in is, is in Dallas, AT and T. Yeah, it's close to Christmas actually. A couple days before Christmas. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Anyway, Corey, that's the, my predictions. Eleven and six. Play another playoff run for us. At least a divisional appearance, I believe. We'll win one playoff game. Um, so the, I'd, love, I'd they, love to say we win the Super Bowl, but I just, I don't know. There's a lot of fucking competition this year. So big bet we can put out is... Uh, I bet 11-5 and five will be really good really good odds. If, if, but I would, you could probably get good odds on like 9 or 8 or 10 then. People are once again discounting the Bucks this year. But what I'm saying They're is right? that... The most sure bet you can get out of the Bucks is Mike Evans getting a thousand yards. You're probably right about that. Yeah, I could absolutely see him hitting that once again. Baker's his boy; he's not going to let him fail. He's, imagine, 
I think that that's the pressure of being like a Bucks quarterback right now. You're like, I can't be the first Bucks quarterback to not get my kids a thousand yards. I can't be the one where it's like, oh, he didn't get a thousand that year, but it's because he had Baker Mayfield throwing to him. Like, Dude, you know, he's had some hobos throwing it to him. Like, he's had Josh McCown, Ryan Fitzpatrick. I love that Ryan, but still, like, you know what I'm talking about, Ryan. And you know what I mean? Like, magic out there, bro. This is a rough quarterback. Talk about you like Jameis Winston most of the time he was there. So like, oh, Winston is a slinger. That's not too dog. If Winston's on your team, the chances are you're gonna get a chill of the yards. But anyway, um, that's all I really have to say about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers score. I think we're gonna take guys to take names. It's gonna make a year. I'm here for it, dude. Young team. Yeah, yeah. Go team, man. You know, go go Buccaneers. Live your dream. But anyway, we 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 gotta get out of here. It's been a hell of a day. Towards my Capri fans, make sure you're liking and subscribing to our content. Otherwise, Corey will be able to pour beer. My beard isn't happening because of no, you. Beer. How miserable is Well, it? that too. Yeah, the beard isn't growing because you guys aren't liking I'm and supposed to get a beard enough. based off your subscriptions, and I yeah. have no beard. So, yeah. That's all I'm and saying. And views. Frankly, just please watch the show. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> Hi. We're out of here. Sports like